Welcome to Conversations in Stewardship. Our guest today is His Excellency, the Most Reverend Michael W. Warfel, the Bishop of the Diocese of Juneau in Alaska. Bishop Warfel is also the Administrator of the Diocese of Fairbanks and the Chairman of the U.S. Catholic Bishops Conference Committee on Evangelization. Welcome to South Carolina, Bishop Warfel. Thank you. It's good to be here. You've written that and, and uh, spoken about uh, uh, stewardship, and you suggested that there are four basic principles of stewardship. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you'd share those with us. Sure, sure. Well, and I can't remember the exact order of I, I put them in, but certainly intentionality is an important concept for, for stewardship. Uh, when a person shares their gifts from God, whether their time or their talents or their resources, uh, it, it can't be accidental. Uh, there, there has to be a desire to, to consciously to say somehow, I want to share these uh, because I have received them from God. If they're not intentional, it becomes haphazard or accidental, and uh, there's, n there's really not much in the way of spiritual giving when it comes to that, if they're not intentional. So intentional is, is, intentionality is a very important part of stewardship. With that comes uh, planned sharing of gifts. And of course, this needs to flow from a life of prayer. I take my, my life to God. I look at my obligations and responsibilities to family, to community, to church, to the diocese, to the world in which I live, the needs of my immediate society. And I put that all together with my own personal needs and my abilities and, and uh, what gifts I do have. And I, and, I, and I need to spend some real good quality time in prayer and reflection. And then, it, because I'm, I'm being intentional about it, and, uh, and because it is flowing from a life of prayer, I need to structure in how can I best use these gifts. I need to plan somewhat. Uh, actually, I need to plan a lot. And uh, because I need to determine how I can best use these gifts to optimize the gifts that God has given to me. Um, with that comes uh, proportionality. Uh, how I have received from God needs to be shared in proportion to how I have received from God. And so if a person is uh, extremely gifted, if they've been given uh, uh, many material gifts, uh, they seem to have some extra time on their hands, you know, well that's in proportionality uh, I need to somehow share that in the same way I've received them. The biblical principle is to those who have received much, much is expected. And then uh, the, uh, uh, stewardship looks toward a sacrificial giving. My, my giving, the way I share my gifts, the way I utilize my gifts, um, need to reflect the, Im the image of Christ on the cross, the sign of total Giving And so I, I looked at the cross, gaze on the cross, and try to image what I see there in the way that I share my resources, my time, my energies, my talents, uh, my money. And uh, as a sacrificial giving, it, it really looks toward sharing from the substance of my life, uh, not just in a peripheral way, not just in an, an accidental way, not just in a superficial way. And as uh, Christ gave his life substantially on the cross, I mean, you can't do more than lay down one's life for your friends. That is the image for sacrificial giving for us in stewardship. I've heard you say that uh, we shouldn't give leftovers to God or back to the mm -hmm. church. And it seems to me that this is really a, included in all of these in proportionality, planning, sacrificial, and so forth, that we mm -hmm. should we, in a sense, the church should should receive the first fruits. True, true, and, that, and that's a basic principle of stewardship. It is the first fruits. Uh, when you're just doing the leftovers, uh, it, it, it's into that haphazard mode, and and God is not really at the forefront of of the giving. Stewardship really keeps in mind that it, it is in response to the uh, uh, the life of grace. In Christ 
And so it's very much as a disciple's response to God's invitation to grace. It is not just something I may feel like, like doing one day but not the next day. It's very intentional, planned, it's uh, proportionate, it is sacrificial. I wonder, you've also suggested that there are four basic principles of evangelization, if you'd share those with us too. Mm -hmm. The uh, evangelization, uh, as I understand it in terms of the, uh, uh, the uh, focal point for evangelization, one would be for those, for Catholics would be, first of all, those who are Catholic, those who are the active members of the Catholic Church. So for most Catholics, we are, our primary uh, focus is helping one another to live their faith. Uh, that means to help one another to be, to be nurtured and to, to, be, to support one another, to help us to celebrate uh, our life in Christ uh, without the support structures that we need in faith. It's, it's difficult to live the faith. There are too many other influences in our world that would pull us away from the values of the gospel. So the uh, first area of, of, uh, of interest would be our Catholic brothers and sisters. Uh, with that, there's, there's the realization that there are many inactive Catholics in, in, in the world. Certainly in the United States, there are roughly 17 million inactive Catholics who are uh, not actively a part of the church for a number of reasons, because of some kind of hurt or frustration, or because of uh, some incident that happened somewhere along the line. Uh, we have to have a concern for, for these alienated brothers and sisters and to find a way to invite, to welcome uh, back into active membership in the church. Uh, a third area would be uh, reaching out to those who are unaffiliated by the church or, under, or, or who are unchurched. And so it's a matter of, and which happens to be the largest uh, group of people in the, in the United States by the way, over 50 percent. And in my own area where I live, it's 65 uh, percent of the people are unchurched. And it's a, it's a, it's a matter of uh, the desire to share the gospel with those who have yet to hear it. And that is the essential mission of the church, is to share Christ. And if there's somebody out there who has yet to hear this message uh, in any kind of a, of a heartfelt, in a deep way, in a heartfelt way, then is it, it is incumbent upon the church to share that message with them because we believe that the mes message of Jesus is salvation and eternal life. So it's rather important that we share that message. And then, uh, and finally, I, I bring in the, uh, the, uh, the sense of ecumenism and interreligious dialogue. It's uh, the, uh, the great high priestly prayer of Christ that we hear from the 17th chapter of John's Gospel is that all may be one. Pope John Paul II wrote an encyclical on that very concept. And it is incumbent upon us also to try to bring about, or at least to foster the communion that Christ desires to be found in his followers. And then, of course, the, with the interreligious dialogue, those are people of faith but yet we have Christ to share too because we believe Christ is the fullness of faith. And so those dynamics, uh, all of it, in, in one way or another, is a matter of sharing Christ with, with, with any one of those groups that I mentioned. How do we link these two important ideas, stewardship and evangelization? What's the, what's the connection there? Well, I think they really go hand in hand. If, if uh, evangelization truly is the, the, the essential mission of the church, uh, the way that that is going to take place and that is going to occur is through the time and the energies and the resources of those who are members of the church. The evangelization is a mission. Stewardship is the way to accomplish the mission. It's uh, the fuel for the fire, so to speak. And uh, so there's, I, I think they're essentially, essentially connected. And I don't know that you can separate the two. We have, uh, I think, sometimes uh, seem to do that. We think of evangelization as this responsibility out here that belongs to evangelization people and stewardship over here that belongs to people and stewardship. 
but it's really a part of the whole gospel uh, call and message. It, they, they go hand in hand. And as we do them both, we are effective with both. As we separate them, we're not effective at either one. Bishop, you come from a diocese, a continent away from the Diocese of Charleston, South Carolina. I wonder if you could give us some words of wisdom about stewardship and evangelization in our diocese. Well, in many ways, what I've experienced so far down here, you are doing a lot of, uh, probably more than my own diocese in, in, in uh, the way of stewardship. People are striving to some to somehow use their gifts to build up uh, the church and promote the kingdom of God here. It's a, I think it's a growing phenomenon in the Catholic Church throughout this country as more and more people are, are delving into what is stewardship and what is evangelization and, and how it all fits together. I see a growing awareness. Uh, for many, many years, uh, evangelization and stewardship were viewed primarily as something that Protestant churches do. Uh, they are certainly uh, concepts that are very much a part of the gospel, however, and I think Catholics are by and large learning that this is something that must be a part of their lives too. Um, so I, I think our search, whether here and this part of the United States are all the way up into Alaska is similar. We may do it different ways. A lot of our people in Alaska, especially in Bush, Alaska, uh, live sub subsistence lifestyles. You know, I've been in places where, where a, a typical, uh, say, a Sunday collection, you know, is if we had $20 in the collection, it'd be pretty good. But I always had moose steak. <laughs> so. Thank you, Bishop Warfel. It's been a pleasure to visit with you. Thank you. It's been great to be here with you.